mm -hmm. um, to become pregnant because then there was a loss and now uh, you, you had to, uh, at some point in the book, I, I felt you, you had given up. Uh, you didn't want to try again. Yeah, that's true. I didn't want to try again. So I tell us the transition, how, you know. I was scared uh, for some time. And then one day, again, I think it's, it's part of who I am and my personality. Um, I am not, I, I'm not able to give up that easily. Right. I, I always mm. bounce back <laughs> somehow. <laughs> somehow, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think after going through the, the grieving process, one day I, I just got up and decided that, look, uh, we need to do this again. Mm. And again, I at that point, all I knew was that we needed to pray it through as Christians. Mm. You know, and so I would get my husband... We are fasting, we are praying, we are saying that the next time it's not going to happen again. And I, I, it just, it just really just happened, you, you know. Uh, I was not expecting yeah. it to happen yeah. that quickly. And I think it's on page 42. <laughs> um, I remember uh, it's, it says, um, okay, I think you were preparing for church. Yes. Uh, let me not read all that part. Let, let, get out there else I'm going to pour water on you. Okay, this is you telling your husband to wake up. And then uh, you go, my period has delayed a few days, but that was normal. Take a pregnancy test. And that was your husband talking. I can't be pregnant now, P, you responded. We haven't really worked at it, remember? I think you had traveled and I was ovulating and women only become pregnant during ovulation. I tried explaining this to him, although he thought of pregnancy suddenly sounded exciting. But I didn't want to feel the disappointment of a negative test again. Abba, we've been trying and praying and fasting for two weeks and God doesn't need ovulation to work a miracle. <laughs> Just go do it. And that's and that's the man. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this so well. <laughs> and then I threw the pregnancy kit at P when I was done with the test. What does this mean? He asked. I then threw the cover of the pregnancy kit, which had diagrams of result accounts at him. <laughs> oh, buffs. <laughs> Find out for yourself, I said. Abba, I don't understand this, so just tell me, what does this mean? P sounded desperate, so I started to laugh. We are pregnant. We are indeed pregnant. Yes. I mean, it was, it was awesome because really, I, you know, we, we, we were not really working at it, you know, and, uh, and then it just happened. Yeah. And I had heard stories, I had heard so many stories of women, you know, they will say that you are dream feel so a beba, mm. you are dream feel mm. so a beba, and you know, it didn't make any sense to me. But that is exactly what happened what in happened? our case because we were not, I didn't expect it would happen. You were praying quickly. about it all right, yes. but you weren't trying too hard. No, not you just left it, you know, to go to. And that's also because it was not easy getting pregnant the first time. So I was not expecting that it can actually happen so, so quickly. Soon. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. And so when I when it, we got the positive, I was like, wow, this is can only be God and nothing else. You know, we are live now uh, on social media, Facebook at Sunny FM Ghana, also on Reveal Multimedia GH, and we are live on YouTube as well, Reveal Multimedia GH. Our website, um, I said website, our uh, social uh, WhatsApp number, that's what it is. I just picked... Uh, you know, a message up to read. Let me just mention it again. 055-2535-036. 055-2535-036. Now, this message um, comes to you, Baba. It says, Hi, Vicky. Can we ask her whether she was given any medical reason as to why she lost her baby, considering the fact that she had a very healthy pregnancy initially? And this is coming through from Abigail. It's a very good question, but no. Um, the doctors couldn't explain it. Um, they really had no scientific reasons. And because it was my first pregnancy, they told me that, well, um, first pregnancies can go either way. It could be good, it could be bad. And mm. they can't really pinpoint the reason why mm. uh, it happened. So that was it. And that's why uh, they had to keep me in hospital to monitor the second pregnancy and see how it goes. How long were you in the hospital? Because your experiences with the other people, it sounded, I'm like, this is like forever. <laughs> It, it was the, forever at the time. At six the time, months. six months. Yes, I was in hospital for six months. I felt like I was in prison. And um, 
at a point I got tired of the hospital curtains, you know, because that's all I stare at <laughs> when I wake up. <laughs> wow. 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 Well, uh, it's the Writer's Block Talk Show here on Sunny 8.7. We're speaking to Baba Kofi, author of This True Life Story. The title of the book is In the Womb of Time. Our WhatsApp line is 0552 If you have any questions for us, we will be ready to help you out. So, Babs, uh, let me just say Baba Kofi. Um... Okay, all right. So, Baba, um, let's talk about the birth, you know, of your second child after uh, you lost uh, Neil Kai, he was, right? Yes. Yes, let's talk about that. Okay, so um, when I was pregnant, I mean, throughout the hospital, it was, it was a lot of ups and downs, having to fight off infections, having to um, prevent a possible loss again. So there were a number of things that I, the doctors had me do. One was they put me on medications. I was on a lot of medications. At a, at a point, I was on about 11 different medications. You know, some were suppositories, some were orals, so many different things, just to make sure the baby doesn't come out. Mm -hmm. And it was very traumatic when I got to 25 weeks because that was the week that the f my water broke for the first, you know, time. The time, okay. And so I was very scared. I was very anxious. And then when I got to 32 weeks, which was the week that my baby came out and died, okay. uh, it was another, you know, <laughs> a difficult time. time. Mm. But I think all in all, I was excited about the process that the doctors you know, they paid attention to me okay. because of the first one. Okay. And uh, the day I was supposed to have, um, the day I was taken to theater, the whole hospital was excited. Ah. I mean, and literally, when I went back to my ward, I could see nurses, cleaners, people come into my room to congratulate me because I had been there with them for six months. They were more like my <laughs> family. <laughs> family, yeah. <laughs> you know. And so, yes, the birth of the one I call Anna Yakova yeah. in the book okay. was a dramatic one. And there was a lot of celebration. Yes, because everybody saw the journey the and the journey. process. But yes. Now, let's talk about societal influences or uh, if we should put it attack on new couples or even couples who have been married for a while but don't have children. Because I remember in page... 41, you, you had been part of a, a, a week-long prayer and fasting. And then, and, and it's all because you were believing God um, specifically for another child. Uh -huh. And then this woman walks to you and says, hey, this is a nice couple. So when am I going to, uh, for you, when am I coming for your child's dedication service? Yeah. And you say, you describe it here, I could have strangled her, yep. but I was in church. Yep. And she was too old and wouldn't survive <laughs> strangling. <laughs> <laughs> and you, 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 you asked your husband, why can't church folk mind their own business? You asked him, and he says, just ignore her. Yeah. Uh, he likes to ignore things. Um, he's a good person. <laughs> <laughs> but You know, but yeah. I'm really, um, how were you dealing with those kinds of pressures, you know, that came from church, from I'm sure probably your husband's family, because um, it, it, uh, it's possible that your parents or your family understood the issue, but your husband's family and church and society in general. I mean, how did you deal with all these pressures that were coming in? I mean, the great thing for me was that my in-laws were very supportive, hmm. but they were very quiet. I think it's because they didn't know how to reach out Okay. Uh, after the loss okay and so they they didn't say anything uh, to me at all you know once a while my mother-in-law would call and find out how you doing she would not mention pregnancy you know it was a very sensitive thing yeah. and i appreciated the fact that they were sensitive mm -hmm. towards it mm -hmm. you know but unfortunately that was not uh, the same for some church folks and then some strangers i would say you know because there are times you would go out and people assume you have kids. 
And so, oh, Michi and Colano, you know, and I'm like, oh. I don't have kids. Do I look too big? <laughs> or somebody would say, are you pregnant? And I'm like, no, I just had a baby, but he died. So I started saying those oh. things, and I realized it was, it, I was being defensive because I was angry. Angry, yeah. Exactly. Mm. And at a point, I told my husband that if anybody asks me when I'm having a baby, I will tell them that, oh, I had one, but he died. Happy now. You know, um, but those things were defensive mechanisms because already I was in pain. It was not as though I was just looking for a new uh, baby, mm. but I had just lost one mm. and I had not gotten over the pain. And so whenever those questions came, it just reiterated the fact that, oh, my God, I lost my baby and I'm not pregnant again, blah, blah, blah. And it happened so many times. You know, I, I was speaking to a young lady a few weeks ago and she said, I'm only in marriage I, I got married eight months ago and the pressure so now i don't want to attend family events any wow. longer when are you getting like, pregnant yes and she said she actually called her auntie because she was graduating um from her masters from doing her masters and when she told her auntie her auntie was like i thought you were coming to tell me you were pregnant what what uh, what is the big deal about having a master's wow. degree and so you know so the societal pressure is real it's real and it's 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 killing a lot of women especially emotionally mm. you know and and i I'm, i know we'll talk about um lmb and first we're getting there right now so you can just <laughs> shoot because i know out of the many issues you've had um you have birthed this awesome ministry i call it a ministry because yeah. it's amazing tell us about live move have your being Yes, so um, after I wrote the book, mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to find a way of marketing it. Okay. So one of the things that I, I did was to start writing pregnancy tales. I call them pregnancy tales on Facebook. On Facebook. And these were real stories mm -hmm. of real women. Mm -hmm. So when I started writing it, I started getting these responses. People would send me um, emails because I had my email address there or a private message that this is my story. How can you help me? Blah, 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 blah. Then after that, I had two dreams. Okay. The first dream, I was in a forest, and I saw all these women with babies, and it's like blood was oozing as though they had cut last wounds, and they were crying and saying, please help us. When I woke up, I thought it was some occultic, <laughs> the way I bowed, okay. and I bowed <laughs> all the demons in my life. I said, what kind of occultic dream is this? Then the next day, I had a second dream. I was in my parents' house, and I was hosting a breakfast meeting for women. You know, and we're talking about marriage and childbirth, and I was like, oh, what is all of this? I didn't pay attention to them. Mm. A few days after, a friend of mine had a dream. So she called me. I was actually driving. She called me. said, Bob, I had a dream you had birthed a, a new baby. And I said, hey, please, oh, <laughs> people, two is enough. I'm okay. And she said, no, 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 no. I don't think it's natural birth because you give birth naturally. I think you're about to birth something. Okay. And immediately she said, I was like, hmm, I wonder. That Sunday when I went to church, my pastor was preaching on the topic, live, move, and have your being. And as I listened to him, all I could hear was that, Charlie, if you're going through pregnancy tales, you are not living home. And that you feel like you're stuck. It's like everybody else has a life apart from mm. you. And you don't move. You don't advance. You're just there. Yeah. You know, and so the Holy Spirit was just speaking to me. And before I realized, I said, no, we need to start a movement that supports people who are going through this. And that's how LMB was Came birthed. About. Yes. Wow. So if somebody really needs your help, because already we're getting messages, how can we get contact numbers? And so we're calling... Um, um, on all of you, uh, is there somebody out there who can really be of help? Wonderful, yes. Uh, you can be of help too. But before you even you give the numbers out, I just wanted to, we're just wrapping up this section now, um, speak to somebody out there uh, who's probably going through your situation. You had a lot of help, support mm. from family, mm. your pastors, mm. from friends, uh, and especially your husband yes. also. But speak to somebody out there who is in this situation. I mean, what I can tell you is that you are not alone. Trust me on that. Um, there are so many people going through miscarriages, pregnancy laws, infertility, and it comes in different ways. And the societal pressure may be a lot. You may be getting issues from your in-laws, friends around, but know that you are not alone. For me, I would always say that God first. 
God created you. He knows what is in store for you. Seek him. Ask him what he's saying. What is God saying about your situation? If you know what he's saying, everything else becomes secondary. And trust me, don't be stuck in your room and cry your eyes out. Mm -hmm. Depression actually delays conception. Oh. And that is because there are hormones in our bodies that help to regulate ovulation. And okay. when you are depressed, those hormones are not produced. And so you yourself, you are delaying, and that's something I tell mm. women all the time, you are delaying your own conception by being depressed and crying all the time. Rather, please live mm. and move and have your being. And God will do it. Wow. It is a matter of time. But get support. Mm. Get support. Get support. And I believe that LMB can give you that support. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Baba, you can send an email to Abba Weba, A B A W I B A, at gmail.com. A B A W I B A at gmail.com. On Facebook, you can find him at here at Baba Kofi. The Kofi is spelled K O F I E. And Baba, you know, it's Baba already. Then Twitter is at Baba Kof. B A A B A. C O F. You can reach here on zero five 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 six one four six seven nine. She's doing amazing with the LMB series, and that's one of the reasons why I actually got her here because I believe there are a lot of women out there who need help. The number again zero five 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 six one four six seven nine. But LMB is not only for women, it's for men as well. As well, yes, yes because they, they, they play a great role, I yes. mean, in, in, in everything. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, Mrs. Baba Kofi, for passing through today. I do hope, uh, you know, that listeners, you are blessed. Now, send us one thing you have learned today. You qualify for, she, she's given out three books today. Tell us one thing you learned today. The WhatsApp line is 0552 536 Remember, my authors always give out something on the show. Thank you once again, Babs. Thank you, Vicky. For passing through. Thank you. Looking for a good book to read? Challenge Enterprises of Ghana is a leading distributor of biblically balanced literature and media products. We offer our customers, including all members of the Christian community, a wide range of Christian literature to choose from. The various categories are Bibles, Christian books, educational materials, stationeries, church words, gift items, gospel media products. We operate 10 bookshops across the country. You can visit our online shop, www.challenge.com bookshop.com. For more information, call 0558-737-356. Email info at challengegana.org. Website www.challengegana.org. Challenge Enterprises of Ghana, transforming lives through the written and spoken word of God. Books is an online store that seeks to link writers to the market and readers to their preferred books. You purchase a book of your choice online, we deliver at your doorstep. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Manor of BKS or call Kwabana on 054-34-22107 to order your preferred books. Manor of Books, a place of wealth. Minister or preacher seeking to convert your audio sermons and sermon notes into books and other readable materials? Are you full of ideas you want to put into writing but really don't know how? Call on Reveal Multimedia today. We offer editorial services such as audio to text transcription of sermons, interviews, and documentaries, proofreading, editing, and development of manuscripts. Other services include concept development, website and social media management, voice works, jingles and commercials, documentaries, etc. For more information, please. Please call 0552-535-036 or 0208-428-322. You can email us at revealmultimediagh at gmail.com. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Reveal Multimedia GH. Reveal Multimedia. Dreams come alive. That's right, it is the Writer's Block Talk Show here on Sunny 8.7. My next guest, you know, is ready. 
Mm. But we're asking you, what did you learn from the womb of time? Our discussion with author Baba Kofi. Send it to the WhatsApp line 0552 Now, as a Christian, do you sometimes find it very difficult to pray? Well, this book is by Benjamin Ennison. Title is Reviving Your Prayer Life. And the subtitle is What Kills Me Now In Times When You Cannot Pray. And he shares profound, you know, facts and keys in this book that will bless your heart. I have with me here Mr. Benjamin Ennison. Good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. Vicky. <laughs> How are you doing, please? I'm blessed. You're blessed. Great. Great to have you here. And let me share something little about him. All right, so Benjamin Anderson is currently a ministerial student at the Trinity Theological Seminary, Ligon, pursuing a Master of Divinity program. He obtained his first degree in uh, BSc Human Biology at the University of Cape Coast, Ghana. Benjamin served as a prayer director in Child Evangelism Fellowship, as well as the Mass Choir UCC chapter. He has been in the teaching ministry since 2001. He is a Christian philosopher an emerging dynamic writer on different subject areas, including ministry, love and relationship, spiritual warfare, and the Christian life. He lives a very simple but strong personal prayer life. Above all, Benjamin loves to share anything he hears the Holy Spirit whisper to him concerning marriage, ministry, spiritual activities, and life in general. <laughs> Hey, so Ben, thank you so much for passing through once again. Thank you. All right. Um, tell us why you decided to write about this particular book. Well, this particular book, Reviving Your Prayer. First of all, let me you know, greet my fathers out there. Okay. My clergy fathers and my biological fathers, my family. Okay. And all friends in St. Paul, Tema. Okay. Yes, uh, so coming back to the question, Reviving Your Prayer Life, hmm. let me see, I took the inspiration from what I was actually encountering in life. You know, with regards to prayer. Okay. Yes, you know, uh, let's see, I pray, but then there yeah, are times sometimes I'm not able to pray. Yes, yeah, so, but then those times, even though I'm not able to pray, there are certain things that I do. Okay, there are certain things that I do. And so those things came together to inspire me to, you know, okay. come out with this particular book. This is not the first book on prayer, though. Okay. I have other books on prayer, yes, yes uh, which I have not published yet. But then I felt that this one would be more, let me say, helpful in our current situation so that we'll be able to launch deeper into other areas in prayer. In prayer. Okay, yeah. so let's start from the very, you know, onset. What is prayer? Yes, talking about prayer, as I've stated in the book, we can have different definitions for prayer. And I think the first thing that I stated was that prayer is a communication. Yeah. So we, yes, we communicate with God through prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that is the first you know, definition that I will give to prayer. Okay. And then we also say that prayer is a relationship with God. Okay. Yes, you know, communication establishes a relationship. So the more we communicate with God, we are trying to establish that kind of relationship with Him. Mm. And through the same prayer, we're able to, you know, build up that relationship with God. Okay, and, and, and so it's, um, let me just... I feel that probably we, sh we should hear the testimony about the book and then we continue uh, with our discussion. So would, who do we have here, uh, madam? <laughs> My name is Nana Tapitins. Nana, yes. okay. So tell us your encounter with this book. Oh, okay. I think just like you asked, mm -hmm. um, the title, yeah. Praying at Times When You Cannot, you cannot Pray. pray. Mm. I think that I found it when I thought I wasn't praying okay. because I was in some kind of situation okay and so I was anxious to see what what is inside okay. and how it's going to help me 
I think the tips he gave, I mean, from the beginning, you realize that the book identifies with you. The fact that there are times that you pray mm -hmm. and there are times that you, that you cannot can't. pray, yes, and mm -hmm. you don't even know what to say. Sometimes you are just in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And you read it and you are like, you know, whenever you find out that somebody knows what you are going through, you relax a little. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the first point for me. Okay. And then going on to you realize that it is not all about standing there one hour to pray and everything. You know, when you are not in the good stance, you are thinking that you are not doing it that hard call way mm. okay but you find that yes sometimes you are doing something in the kitchen or just lying on bed and telling god that this thing what are you doing about uh, this it's all about it's it's communicating okay okay, okay. telling your mind to, to god. god okay and sometimes just being there and just telling him that i'm in your presence so how did the book change your life so like i said the first thing was to i'd have it identify with me with that the, with you exactly okay. and then it gave me the courage that i'm not in it alone i mean serious people go through that phase mm. as, as mm. well so mm. go on the little you are doing just bring it up gradually okay and other things that are in there that you get to know that that's, that's right that's doing. right <laughs> All right then, I also have with me uh, Kojo uh, Kobana. I'm always mixing up your name, Mr. Kobana Nyamiche Dapa. He is the CEO of Mano Books. It's going to help me uh, review this particular book. Now, Man of Books is an online bookstore that links writers to the market and readers to their preferred books. Once you purchase a book from, uh, you know, their library, they can deliver it to you right at your doorstep. So good afternoon to you, Mr. Yamiche Dapa. Hello, Vicky. Yes. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm Love great. You. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. Okay. So, um, also for Ben, you spoke about the different types of Christians we have. Yeah. Um, and and the levels of prayer, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, I wanted to, to take us through that, and then we come to why it is important for the Christian to develop a healthy prayer life. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, yes. So I mentioned about people who, you know, let me say, they are very prayerful. Yes, there are times that you find yourself praying. Okay, you pray all right, but then there are times too when you, you cannot pray. That is the first category of Christians. They pray sometimes and other times too, you know, they are not able to pray. Mm -hmm. And then there's another category, that is those who don't pray at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as for them, prayer is not, it's not part of their system. So, okay. yes, they don't have any business with prayer. Okay. Then there are also the, the third category, that is the very prayerful Christians. They are very consistent with their prayer life. So those people, no matter what happens to them, they always ensure that at least they have said their prayer. Mm. Whether it is one hour, two hours, or 30 minutes, 15 minutes, mm. they will make sure that at least for the day, they have prayed. They have prayed. Yes, and sometimes too, there are others, as I've mentioned already, they will pray. Maybe for one week, they will be very consistent. In the following week, they, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they want to not, sleep. Yeah, they want to sleep. So they are in between. There are those who just don't have don't, any yeah. um, proper pattern for prayer. Exactly. And there are those who are in and out, like look, look warm. Yes. And then there are those who are actually, yes. you know, making that as a lifestyle. Exactly. So, so tell us why you think it is important for every Christian to develop a strong prayer life. Yes, uh, I, I think that I have mentioned some importance of prayer, significance of prayer. That's right. You know, prayer does a lot of things in our life. Me in particular, my experiences come about through prayer. Mm. Yes, there are things that I pray to God about and those things come to pass. Let me say, um, there are times when I pray in the midnight and I feel that things are working in the realms of the spirit. Mm. So when I have this encounter, I feel more like I have to pray. And I also have the mentality, or let me say, yes, the belief that if I don't pray, a lot of things will be destroyed spiritually in my life. So it means that if I pray, then those things, instead of being destroyed, will be rather built. Mm. Uh, yes, so I think prayer, it will help us to you know, build certain things in the realms of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And any time we also pray, we are able to you know, assess the spiritual giftings, or let me say the blessing that mm. God yes, has given us. Those things hang in the spirit. Mm. But until we make prayer 
uh, into the atmosphere, those things may they, not come. They may not come. Yes. Okay, I'll be sharing some um, ch um, pages from the book, but I just want to talk to you, um, um, Kovna. <laughs> <laughs> Kovna, what did you make of the book? I mean, after, you know, reading it, because I know you are aware, I mean, when it comes to the book. <laughs> what, what do you make of this? So, um, there's some particular parts of the book that I actually highlighted, especially okay. I began. Okay. I began with the acknowledgement that was by very Reverend Samuel O. Japan. Okay. So, this is what he said. He said that. <laughs> I told you he's a worm. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he sat for the Trinity Theological <laughs> Seminary entry examination twice and was unsuccessful. Yeah. Unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. Only on his second attempt. Okay. Before then, Benjamin had tried on two occasions without mm -hmm. any success from the second diocese. Yeah. Mm. Which means he had he had a total of four attempts <laughs> before <laughs> gaining entry <laughs> to be trained as a minister for the Methodist uh, Church. Okay. Okay. And this is somebody who is prayerful. <laughs> <laughs> but he tried four attempts. Yeah, that's right. And I like I like that because it makes the book very real. Mm. <laughs> it's not some book that it's abstract. Yes, mm -hmm. it's not abstract. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you sometimes you read some books and somebody has just picked this one mm -hmm. said this and this okay. said this and he has just yeah. put them together. together. <laughs> but this book is a book that you can relate with. Mm -hmm. That's right. You understand? So yeah. that was even from the beginning, like mm -hmm. that was what like what my you. appetite okay. even read to more continue. of book. Exactly. Okay. And his definition of prayer. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, as a charismatic person, my own prayer is not just communication, it's a yeah. divine communication. Yeah. Because we pray in tongues. <laughs> and that is something that you cannot understand. That's so right. when he explained, so let me see, I think I highlighted how he explained prayer. So he said, a prayer is a divine communication between the spirit of God mm. and the spirit of man. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he encompasses both praying in understanding and praying without yeah, understanding. understanding. So yeah. I feel that a lot of work went into this book. That's right. And then it's very topic. I like how he's topical in his, um, in his, uh, in his the Hello whole writing yeah. of the mm, book because mm. at a point he talks about things that hinder us from prayer yeah. that's right he gives topical yeah. uh, introductions now, to is jumping the gun he's actually accessing the book as, <laughs> as a word <laughs> <laughs> so let me just read uh, this is a chapter this is chapter two the necessity of prayer okay. he says jesus himself prayed yeah. He also talks about the father prayer is essentially needed to escape temptation okay. prayer is a necessary uh, requirement to overcome temptations yeah. then he goes on to talk about the fact that prayer is important for deliverance from temptation yeah. and then he says prayer is a spiritual vitality for resisting the devil it says prayer is a weapon of warfare prayer establishes and builds a relationship with god prayer yeah. is essential for a timely divine intervention okay prayer is heaven's incense look he goes on and on this is a book you must have remember we are live on youtube reveal multimedia gh also on sunny fm and reveal multimedia gh our whatsapp line zero five five two five three five zero three six now also for the other um part i want us to talk about um, okay. is the agents of inconsistency okay in prayer okay because um somebody sends a message here and king stina is going to check it for me i'll read it out because most christians yeah. battle with it okay how to develop a solid prayer life because okay. you are telling us in this book that yeah. it is essential it's a lifeline yeah. for every christian okay so what are some of the things that really prevents us from developing this kind of prayer life yeah so 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 well mentioned uh, as I, i've stated in the book mm -hmm. These things are very practical. They are things that I've personally experienced them. Mm. Yes. There are times, for example, there are times when they say you think a lot. There are issues of life. Okay. Of course, we cannot avoid those things. Certain things will come your way and mm. you would have to think about these about things. Them, yeah. So when these things preoccupy your mind, it makes it very difficult for you to pray. So when you worry a lot, you cannot pray? When Yes. Okay. Yes, you cannot pray. Okay. And I think I was also talking about the fact that sometimes we Christians, especially in call those who think are spiritual, <laughs> and so <laughs> yes, they want to descend from God before they take a certain so decision. Yeah. Yes, it is very difficult. If God is not speaking at a particular time when you need it, mm. yes, it is very difficult to move on, to mm. do what you want to do because mm. you don't want to make a mistake. That's right. Yes, and so if those times God is not speaking, then you think about it. Sometimes you want to add personal 
influence. Influence. Yes. Uh -huh. You, you want, want to quicken things <laughs> for yourself. Yes. So when those things happen, it's very difficult to, you know, yeah. uh, pray. Yeah. And I love, okay. You also some, talked about sicknesses. Yes, sicknesses too. Sometimes when you are sick, mm. it is a bit difficult to, to do as you assume your normal prayer life. When you have uh, a busy schedule. Now, I just, when I got there, I said to myself, you mm. know, recently my husband and I, we moved outside. Okay. I mm. mean, Accra. We are towards the Kumasi and Samoan Road. Okay. And so we leave at dawn to mm. avoid all that traffic from Mama Samoan all yeah. the way to the, um, that part. <laughs> you know, so um, our prayer life became mm. somewhat affected. Okay. okay. So what we did is this. Mm. When we set off from home, mm. we pray one solid, sometimes two hours, three hours from that short stretch to, okay. to wow. Accra. Okay. And we pray. Sometimes okay. he leads, sometimes I lead, sometimes okay. I led. We all pray, and we pray solidly one hour, okay. uninterrupted. I'm sure that at a point, you know, passerbys will be looking at us mm. like there's something wrong yeah. with us because <laughs> our lights, our windows are not tinted. Okay. But okay. we pray. Okay. And we pray solidly for one hour before, I mean, okay. during that period until we are, okay. we, we, we know that he drops me or I get off from somewhere to okay. come to work. So um, you talked about the fact that having a busy schedule can yeah. actually prevent you from praying. Yeah, yeah. But is there a way to find a way around it like we have so that we don't, you know, because there are many people who are Christian for Ankasa. Yeah. They are finding so many reasons not to pray. Exactly. What would you have to say about this? I think one of the solutions is mm. nose mask. <laughs> you can pray behind your nose mask. <laughs> exactly. So At least COVID has been something. <laughs> I think it's also helpful. If, a lot of times, okay, COVID, was, I mean, we, we're still in COVID, so I should have added this one. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, but I think I'm not, what I was saying was that sometimes mm -hmm. I use ERPs to, yeah. you know, when, when, sometimes when I'm walking, mm -hmm. I have to do prayer, what do you call it, prayer work. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm doing that, I put some ERPs in my shoes. So people will not think that maybe this guy is going yeah. crazy. He's going nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it is, it is very true that when you are busy, mm -hmm. it is very difficult to, let me say, you know, pray in mm -hmm. all times of a prayer. But then I don't think that it should be an excuse. Mm -hmm. Yes, it shouldn't be an excuse. I have always said that no matter how busy somebody is, the person will try to create time for something that is deemed very important, important to them. Yes, mm -hmm. but this is the case we are saying that prayer is very important. So if you're a Christian, uh, let me say, you, you think that prayer is your everything. Mm -hmm. Then you will create time, no matter how busy you are, yeah. to be able to pray. And I have also mentioned that even if you are working, there are times where usually I do typing. Mm -hmm. okay. So if I know that after the typing, I'll be so tired and I won't be able to pray. Whilst I'm typing, I also pray. That's right. And I think it's, very, it's always effective for me. Because uh, uh, you, you, you mm -hmm. I, I think that for, for most Christians, it's mm -hmm. our understanding of prayer. Okay. For instance, we think that we have to pray when nobody's around. Okay. When the place is quiet mm -hmm. so we can have a personal yeah. time mm -hmm. with God. Yeah. So when the person is even typing and praying, mm. first of all, they feel guilty. So <laughs> they feel that they have to make some very okay. special time. And some people think that the only time you can pray is at dawn. Okay. So if he's he planned to pray at from five to six, mm -hmm. when he wakes up at six, I say, oh, I say, <laughs> he mm -hmm. can't pray again. Yeah. So you see those kind of things. Yeah. But when you understand that, yeah. we should pray without yeah. season. Yeah. We know yeah. that we can pray at any point. Well, if you just tune in, this is the Writer's Blog Talk Show. I'm speaking to Benjamin Ennison, author of a very solid book, Reviving Your Prayer Life in Times when you cannot pray now ben um you also shared how to build a consistent prayer life as okay. we are talking about now okay. you mentioned that you must pray frequently in your mind and in your heart okay you mentioned that you can pray whilst you're working a yeah. prayer walk yeah uh, like you do yeah. you can pray while you're traveling yeah you can pray while you're working yeah in fact women you can even pray when you're cooking <laughs> that's one thing i learned from my mother okay she's singing she's cooking she's cutting onions but her mouth is moving yeah and you talk to her sometimes she doesn't hear and you, you say ah ma this and then she goes oh sorry and she's been praying Ooh. and it's because we were a lot Ooh. she were taking she was taking care of other family you know uh, you know members their children and all that and so she didn't have as much time as she wanted okay. So this is what Ben is saying. Pray whilst you're working. You can pray in your own office, like uh, Kwabna has said, pray underneath the mask. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, you know, so shy to, you know, pr pray with your prayer partners. Listen to some messages yeah. and songs and stop focusing on long hours 
of prayer. He also shares about the secret of prayer. Look, this is a book you must have. It's a must have for every single Christian out there. Ma Vicky, I don't know whether I can touch on the long hours of prayer. People may yes. think that I'm saying that I'm not encouraging long hours of prayer. Okay. You know, uh, what I'm saying here is that yes we all pray we have long hours of prayer mm -hmm. but then sometimes if you you focus on that there are times when well, I, feel like I don't feel like praying mm -hmm. because of time factor i would say that maybe one hour it would be too much for me so i said okay let me do maybe 15 minutes of prayer okay and that one will motivate me to make a step to pray mm -hmm. but then whilst i am praying then let me say the prayer will get sweeter so i continue yeah. to maybe one hour two hours or depending on any okay so what yes. you're saying is that we shouldn't focus on yes. us and um, have the mentality that you need four to six hours of prayer exactly. but whatever period and time you have exactly. you can't pray exactly. you know when i was reading when i was reading that part this thing came to my mind mm -hmm. i have a lot of lady friends mm -hmm. okay and i have a girlfriend okay mm -hmm. they call me okay we talk Mm -hmm. When I'm talking to my girlfriend, it's different. We don't look at the time. By the time, we <laughs> yeah, it. that's right. It's, it's really dependent on the relationship that exactly. you have. That's right. Exactly. The relationship is there. Exactly. You watch the time. Exactly. That is one, the foundation, actually. Yeah, and there was one part that he said, listen to some messages or songs. Yeah. It got to some time. I went in my prayer life. Mm -hmm. I couldn't really pray because, okay. like he said, some of the things that hinders you from praying, mm -hmm. yeah. prolonged joblessness, and all this. <laughs> I got to that point. Like, what am I even praying about? I've been praying. I'm not seeing anything. <laughs> and I found this song, <laughs> "Promises" by I think Maverick Songs or something. Okay. okay. And the words in that song. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just put on my my. I have a, a screen in my room. Okay. And I just put the lyrics on it. What's, and the, just What's it. the title again? It's uh, Promises, "Promises" by Mavericks. Mm, okay. And I just listen to the song, like I just go through the mm. lyrics, and okay. the songs are so, the words are so powerful, and it's a prayer. Mm. It's a prayer by itself. I remember one day I just went through it. When I finished, like two hours later, I was called for an interview. <laughs> wow. That's right. <laughs> wow. And so, wow. and that explains it. Wow. Well, I think I have a similar experience which I put yes, in the book. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so um, I forgot to even ask Baba Kofi about where to get copies, but let me just ask you now okay. before you give us your final word. Two okay. minutes, we are out of here. So. Okay. Uh, but before you do that, uh, Yao Subri. Okay, okay. Wants to say hello to you. Oh, so yeah. knows you from UCC. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we um, friend. Okay. Yeah. And then Victoria Samson. Um, says hello, we are listening and say hi to Benjamin Anderson, our church member. Oh, <laughs> um, this is coming in from Perpetual um, oh. Victoria. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. I think they're in St. Paul's. Yes, he's in St. Paul's. Okay, all oh, right. So, I'm not going to hear you do Okay, so where do we find copies of this book? Okay, I think for now, um, we have copies at Challenge Books. Okay, yes, Challenge Books have copies, and um, if you are in Temachu, you can visit St. Paul on Sundays. We have, uh, we have copies in our bookshop, and um, for now, th these are the places that we can. I think at Second D, we have some at Second D, Wesley Methodist Church. Okay. Yes, that is Second D, okay. Wesley Methodist Church. And if Cathedral. somebody wants to get in touch with you in any way, uh, are you uh, ready to give out your number or any uh, okay. contact that has to do with your business? Okay, yes. Yeah, so because you are into integrity books. Yes. Yes, okay, so you should. Yes, so uh, then the contact is 0 uh, 2 okay. Slowly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, so 0 Okay. Yeah. One more time. 0 Okay. 4 Okay. And then a Facebook page is uh, integrity books okay yes facebook page integrity books and instagram at innocent benjamin okay i have a call i don't know whether um okay i couldn't uh, <laughs> 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 can pick. Okay, so give us your last words um m maybe i should start from you Kobna. um <laughs> no let me start from you <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I have just one Someone minute to go. Know the to, <laughs> one minute uh, yes we have one minute to go so okay um, so your, uh, your message, final words to somebody listening who's probably struggling as a okay. Christian to pick up his life, I mean, his prayer life. Okay, so what I want to say to everybody is that um, let us all try to build a very strong relationship with God through prayer. Yes, because it is through prayer that God will be able to also draw closer to us. Other than that, yeah, I don't know how we'll be able to, you know, befriend God or have a kind of deeper relationship with Him. With Him, all okay. right. Kavna, what's up? 
Okay, so seconds. concerning the book, thirty seconds. <laughs> 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 okay, I say that uh, prayer is a relationship. A relationship <laughs> must stay at one place for long. Yes, yeah. mm. grow with it. That's yeah. right. And then secondly, I want to say that Manor of Books has started a book club. Okay. And we want everybody to join because these book clubs are interesting. We share all manner of information right there. Okay. So f- um, come to our Instagram page, Manor of Books. Mm-hmm. And DM us, we'll send you the link. You join our WhatsApp group and we'll update you on what we do. And Barbara's book, you can get it from Manor of Books. Come to, <laughs> <laughs> come to our Instagram page and buy the book. That's have right. It. <laughs> you can give your number anyway. My number is 0543 422 That's right. 0543 422 So that's the song that he was talking about, Promises. I'm Vicky Amor. This has been the Writer's Block Talk Show. We are back next week, 1 to 2 p.m. here uh, with the Kiddie Zone. It's the kids all about children next week. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ben. And thank you so much, uh, Kobana. Now, Baba uh, is here to kill me out of here. <laughs> That's Baba Okran. Thank you to Kinstina for supporting. And thank you to Baba Kofi for also passing through. I'm Vicky Amwa. Bye-bye for now.